In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Google Sheets in order to process lab data. So I'm first going to show you how, if we have a distance that a car went and time that it took to get there, how we can get the speed at different data points. So I'm going to click this cell where I want speed to go, and I'll say equals. I'm going to click the distance that it corresponds to, and then hit divided by, and then click the time cell and hit enter. And note that it calculates the distance over time after two seconds. I can select this data point and see this little box here. I'll click and drag it down. And this gives me data for after four seconds, after six seconds, and after eight seconds and 10, uh, exactly as such. I have a bit of a sig figs issue. So I'm going to select all this data and I'm going to click decrease decimal places. And I want to bring it down to two uh, sig figs because uh, I actually want our time to have two sig figs. And note that if I were to write in here, for example, 2.0, it stays at two. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to increase the number of decimal places. And that way, it gives me the two, not just the two, but the 2.0. Uh, additionally, I suppose here that we do have three sig figs, so I'll fix this speed. Um, all right, next I want to show you how to graph. So I'm going to select all this data and I'm going to click uh, insert chart and the chart comes up. Now Google will just give me whatever it wants to give me um, at first. So I will uh, click on this and I want to go to setup. I want this not to be a column chart, but rather a scatter plot so that I have data points that correspond exactly um, on this graph. For example, this point here is my um, distance of 3.01 meters over the 2.0 seconds. Great. So let's say that I had some mistakes with how things turned out. Um, typically speaking, your x-axis will be whatever comes first here, and your y-axis will come second. Um, but let's say that you had distance over here and time over here, and you ended up with the wrong y-axis and the wrong x-axis. They'd flipped. Well, what I can do is uh, go here where it says x-axis, and I can change it. Um, it actually has a suggestion for me. I can put distance in if I want. But even if I didn't have that, what I could do is click here, select a data range, and I could change it. If I wanted B1 to B6, I could have it be that. I could have it be cells A1 to A6. That's actually what I want. A1 to A6 is time for my x-axis. And there we go. Um, additionally, if I want to change the y-axis, that's where series is. That series actually means y-axis. And I could do basically the exact same thing that I did in the previous case. All right. Next, I'm going to customize my data. So if I want to, I can go to series. And I can add a trend line. And this trend line is going to be a line of best fit. Uh, now, I'm, I've got it linear. Theoretically, you could have it be exponential or otherwise. I want this to be linear, uh, and the data definitely looks linear. And I'll also label it with uh, use equation. So this actually is the equation of the trend line. And note that I've got y equals mx plus b. The m, uh, the 1.5, that actually is the average speed over all of this data. So I could actually use this um, slope to find out what rise over run, distance over time, is over the course of my whole data aggregated. Um, I can also click show r squared, and that will tell me um, how close to a perfect line our data is. If r squared is exactly 1, it means I have a perfect linear equation. If I change the data a little bit, like let's say I make this 3.1, zero. If I do that, then notice, um, and I also change my 5.99 to 5.5, notice how my R squared changes. It gets a little bit lower because my data is a little bit less linear due to this being a little bit off. Um, anyway, that's all for this video. Hope it's helped. Uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.